everyone and welcome back to another vlog. So today's vlog is all about applying for your very first job as a newly qualified nurse. Well, any job really is a nurse. So yeah, hopefully you're going to find it useful and I can give you some tips and advice to help you on your way and hopefully you're going to smash it. In this vlog, I'm also going to talk mainly about GP interviews because that is where my main love is but i am going to give some overall advice for standard interviews hopefully that's going to help you out as well if you're not applying to gp i also just need to add that i have already done a community nursing interview vlog which i will post a link below so have a look at that if you want more district nursing specifically go and check that one out my first tip on interviews to this one is probably the biggest tip I think is how to ease those nerves because I'm the sort of person probably like you where I get really really nervous my mind goes blank they'll ask me questions that I know the answer to every day in everyday life but at the interview under the pressure your mind goes blank you're just like I have no idea what color the grass is outside it's one of those and it's terrible why do we do it to ourselves but this tip is exactly for you and hopefully it's going to help you calm those nerves a bit so go in and look around contact the place or area that you're applying to ask can you go in meet the team see what they do have a look around at the clinic rooms things like that this is what i did the i was very very fortunate that the practice said to me you're new to the area do you want to come in and have a look around meet the team and if you are still interested you like the look of the place come and apply and I, it was amazing i'm so glad i did this because it honestly put my nerves at ease i spent an hour in that place that day and it wasn't even the interview it was just looking around chatting to all the staff oh it was lovely and it honestly on the day of my interview i was so relaxed i was still a bit nervous because i really wanted it but it really it just yeah it really benefited me and hopefully that's going to help you out however there are obviously other techniques that you can use breathing techniques a bit of meditation calm yourself down listening to music on the way little things like that that you can do whatever you know and works best for you use that my second point is as well dress to impress everyone sort of has seen comments about asking what should i wear to an interview first impressions is everything to me i went in a full-blown suit um let me show you so my full-blown suit was this jacket not the blue shirt underneath ignore that but this was my suit jacket beautiful color green is fashionable at the minute apparently and these were my suit trousers and I wore a white shirt underneath and it just, it looks professional and I wanted them to look at me and think, wow, we could employ this girl and that's the way you should think as well. So yeah, OTT is the way I see it. So let's move on to the specific questions of interviews because that's what you really, really want to know. You want to know the questions, answers, all of that jazz. So I'm going to move along into that and I have to apologise. I've got a little dog in the background who might jump on, on the bed, jump off the bed. So I'm really sorry if that's a distraction throughout this video, but it is what it is. He's cute. <laughs> so the first question that they always ask, I've been asked this in every single interview I've ever had, whether it's for a HCA role, my both my nursing roles, even when I, I worked in like sales and the hospitality, it's something that everyone has always asked. So you're guaranteed you're more than likely 99% gonna be asked this question. Why do you want this job? Why do you want to work in this particular area? So mine was GP. Why do you want to be a GP nurse? You have to share your passion. If it's just a job to you and you're just applying for the sake of applying because you really need the money, think of something to say. <laughs> Don't say that. Just say, come from the heart. Think about all the positives of the role. Think about the area you're going to be working in. What do you love about that area? What has made that stand out compared to all of the other nursing jobs that you could apply for? Because there's thousands on NHS jobs. Why has that one in particular stood out to you? And why do you, can you see yourself working in that area? Just answer it honestly and openly. But please don't say, I just need the money because I don't think that'll go down too well. <laughs> The next question that you usually get asked, but not always, is your experience and qualities. So what can you bring to the team? What qualities do you have? This is where you have to sell yourself. And I know people really struggle. I really struggle with selling myself. But the way I see it is it's me or somebody else. So if you're not selling yourself enough, that can literally just be a tiny little point that they pick up on to not give you the job. I failed a couple of times previously at interviews purely on selling myself and 
and I rang up and I got the feedback because I was getting to the point where I was like, why am I getting this job? So I rang up for feedback on two occasions. Both times they said, you need to sell yourself more and you need more confidence. So it just goes to show that is a big thing because if everyone's got the same experience, if everyone's got same qualifications, which we all have, we're all nurses, you really, really need to sell yourself, make you stand out from everybody else. Another question you might get asked on is the person spec on the job. So I would, massive tip, look around the person spec and the job requirement slash um, description for the particular area that you're working at, whether it's GP or another area, make sure you know those, look through the essential criteria because they might say to you, okay, what experience do you have in this? You've said that you meet the criteria, talk to me about it. So just do that, go through the list and think on your head, okay, what am I gonna say to answer these questions if they ask me about it and my experiences? But you already know that anyway, because you obviously meet the criteria, you wouldn't have an interview. So that's just gonna come naturally off the top of your head. They usually ask things like team working, like what makes a good team? Um, how would you be a good team player? Those sort of questions as well. And just think about good teams that you've worked in. So if you've had a placement somewhere or if you've worked in an area as a HCA or a qualified nurse, if you're a qualified nurse already, think about the sort of the good teams that you've worked in. What was good about that team? What what worked? What didn't work? And just say that in the interview, just go through the lists of and show examples as well. Another tip, sorry, always, if you're going to give an answer, always give examples. They love if you give loads of examples of how you do it, it just shows that you're understanding the question and you understand what's expected of you in the role as well, if that makes sense. So always give examples. You're also more than likely, not everywhere does this, but nine times out of 10, I think most places always ask a scenario based question. So they want to see what your response is in this sort of question. So they might give you the angry patient scenario. What are you going to do with an angry patient? If they come into your room, you're the only one there. How are you going to handle that situation? Are you a calm person? Are you patient? Can you sort of distract the patient? and sort of settle them. They just want to see your reaction and how you handle the stress, basically. And that's all about your communication skills. It's all about, you know, listening to the patient, not overpowering the patient, telling them that you understand their concerns and all of that, and just making them comfortable and, yeah, and seeking help and advice if you need it. So if a patient's getting really aggressive to the point where they're punching you or something, you want to call security. <laughs> so, yeah, it's about being safe but sensible at the same time. So if you are applying for GP, it's a lot of loan working questions as well. So how are you at being autonomous? You need to show that you're autonomous because if you want to work in primary care, community, district nursing, GP, that sort of area, you need to be confident in your own skills. You need to be confident as, your, as a nurse. Obviously, you'll have the support and you'll have the training and all of that. But it is a lone working type of role. You're not going to have a ward to fall back on all these people. And to be honest, I love that. This is why GP is perfect for me. I love being on my own and being in control of my own clinic, my own patients. I love it. I thrive in that sort of environment. So you need to show that. You need to show that you can do that. Give an example again of when you've been autonomous and when you've handled that sort of situation, how you work in that situation. Do you cope well under the pressure? All those sort of little things is exactly what they're looking for. A few other things that I've heard, I don't know, I wasn't asked these sort of questions, but I have seen on other Facebook pages and things like that, is people have been asked about safeguarding and mental health, when in GP in particular, because that's quite big as well, about recognising those signs and symptoms and who you would refer to, your appropriate services. So if you are applying to GP, look around the area at what's about like have they got mind have they got healthy minds have they got mental health teams community mental health teams what are the local safeguarding is there a multi-agency safeguarding involved have a look at all those sort of things just to be prepared just in case they do ask you that question always better to be over prepared for an interview i think and lastly just be yourself just if you can't be yourself, who can you be? So be yourself, try and relax, show that passion in the area that you want to work in and they will absolutely love you, I'm sure. Ooh, on one last note, sorry guys, 
take a folder take a portfolio if you've got a portfolio this is mine with all of my certificates all of my achievements in at the back i've got some previous mental feedback slips that i've put in there that they can get out and they can read if they want and just id and things like that in the back just in case they need to photocopy that sort of thing but take a portfolio with you take if you're a student nurse newly qualified nurse take all of your mentors feedback any patient feedback anything you've got that's going to make you shine take <laughs> and just yeah sell yourself like i said so just one last little summary of applying for any sort of nurse job out there just one look up the area you're working at know it inside out know what they do services they preside ride everything because they might ask you that two if you are applying to gp make sure you know the local prevalence of the area what sort of conditions are out there age ranges things like that have a look on the government and council websites the gp practice website itself might give you that information and the values and visions look them up as well the job description and the person spec you want to know inside out just in case they ask you anything and they ask you to give you examples make sure you know those because they're more than likely going to ask you the, the essential stuff in the interview and the rest will just follow. The rest will just come naturally. The scenario questions, teamwork, and you know it, guys. You do it out there already. You've done it on placements. You've done it as a nurse, whatever. You know it. Just relax, calm your mind, and just answer as you would. And lastly, give examples. I've said it already. Give examples. Make sure you example everything so you show you understand what they're saying. So thank you as always for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And I just wanted to say if I haven't covered anything, if there's something extra that you'd like to know, give me an inbox and I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you've got for me. So thank you so, so much and I shall see you next time.